Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here. And you know, normally when I post a video with photo samples, this is all you see. It's not very detailed and it's only on the screen for a few seconds. But I make high resolution photographs designed to print at very large sizes. So I thought it might be interesting to take a deeper dive into a few of the photographs I shot recently in Mounds in Cairo, Illinois and seen in one of my most recent videos. Let's start with this big old house in Cairo. These are the camera settings for the photograph. I've said this in many previous videos, but I love shooting in this soft gray light. It removes harsh shadows from the equation and lets the details of the architecture really show. And I love the quality of the light in this exposure. As we zoom in, you can see there's a lot of detail in all the textures. The old fashioned composition siding, the reflections in the window glass. It's beautiful. Look at all the patterns in these curtains. I like that enough that I shot it separately. We'll look at that image in a minute. So many textures as you swoop in for a closer look. Let's dive in and see how the lens and the sensor handled these fine branches against the sky. Nice, look at that. Those fine lines held really well. And there's some little sparrows up in that tree. I particularly enjoy finding evocative details like this door. My first reaction looking at this photograph is that I like the contrast. The white door set into the dark exterior of the house. Something about seeing grass tangled around that gnarly old handrail makes me really happy. I like tangled things in my photographs. I don't know why. Let's zoom in for a closer look at this woodwork. Wow, look at the level of detail in here. You may be thinking that this detail is irrelevant, but as I said, my photographs are made for the potential to print very large. I've sold prints, believe it or not, up to 10 feet tall or even bigger. So it's important to me that the details are there and that the sharpness makes a good foundation for extreme enlargements just in case. The sensor actually picked up more detail inside the room, but I'll let that go in the black and white conversion. I could have reduced contrast or maybe brightened the exposure to bring that out, but overall the image would have been less dramatic and I really like the black. Look at that little tendril. We can see the nails. Okay, let's move on to the window photograph. Again, the contrast with the white window and the curtains against the dark of the house. I love that. Cracular patterns in those paint flakes is really nice. If 
Aside from the close-up details, overall I think this window photograph is a really evocative image that leaves room for viewer interpretations, the metaphor of the curtain reaching outside the window. I just think there's a lot of viewer could read into it, potentially. I don't really want to spend too much time on this image, but I thought the detail in the fallen TV antenna wrapped in the vines was kind of cool. Okay, let's move on to a secondary image of this little house. I had high hopes for this composition, but overall I think it's hurt by the fact that the house and the tree are too similar in tone. Visually, they just blend into each other too much, even though there are some nice textural differences as you dig into the image. This would have been a stronger photo if the house was white, I think. Next, we'll look at my favorite house of the day and one of my favorite photographs of the day. The light really works here. I enjoy picking out interesting details like the fallen window blinds in this window. And again, I love these tangled vines climbing all over the walls. Those wooden brackets hiding in the shadows there. These rickety old wooden steps are soon to be totally consumed by nature. If you watch the original video, you'll know this is one of the windows we peeked into. And that's the other window that we looked into. The leaves on this magnolia tree, how nice. And finally, we'll look at this old school. Now in my Mounds video, I speculated this might have been a school, but I can now confirm that this was Mounds High School. I don't know when it closed, but people were still attending there as late as the 1970s. By this point in the day, the light had become really direct and it put the school into a backlit situation.
I was able to recover a lot of the shadow and highlight detail, though. See, the sky looks pretty good considering the harsh sunlight I was working with. Before we go on to check out the bonus footage, I thought I'd show you a test print of one of the photographs on a letter-sized sheet of Canson Infinity platine fiber rag. I love this paper, but my printer struggles with it. I inevitably experience printer malfunctions anytime I use this paper, which is a shame because it's so, so pretty. Platine fiber rag is a cotton sheet with a barium sulfate coating. It's referred to as a Barita surface paper. It's a very high quality sheet of paper, and I think you would agree the prints on it are stunning. Okay, y'all, here's a little bit of bonus footage that didn't really fit in with the Mounds and Carol video. On my way home, as I was leaving Mounds and driving back to Cairo, I spotted a big chimney or furnace or something on the side of the road. I'm not sure what that old ruin is, but it looks to me like it might have been a home site. And now it's just a place for storage of, I guess, possibly forgotten telephone poles. Okay, y'all, thanks for watching. Be sure to visit my website at keithdotson.com.